Welcome to part three, the final episode of the 1910s Dress and Half Scale. Make sure you go back and watch part one and part two before you continue. In this episode, you'll be seeing how to attach the skirt to the bodice and the bodice lining. I'm using a wearing history pattern for this, but you can use any 1910s period pattern that has a bodice lining and an outer bodice. You just adjust your methods just a little bit. Hope you enjoy this video. You can find more videos on my channel. Okay, I have my skirt pieces. The first instructions for the skirt is to pleat it uh, on the front core. That pleat line is this second solid line on your pattern piece. So you are going to fold it on that line. Of course, you're going to fold it in your fabric. And then you're going to top stitch it. Uh, one inch from there. So stitch it all the way down. I'm not even sure how I can demo this. But this second line here, this is center front. So this for me would have one half inch, which probably is about the center front line. And you're going to press those leave towards the front. So your stitch line will be like this and then pressed towards the front. Do that on both pieces. Okay, so this piece we want to keep the edge turned under. So you can turn under your seam allowance and hand stitch this into place on this side. On this side you want it to go out like an extension. So you will finish this edge usually with a seam binding or something like that. So to make that placket, we are going to match these two tucks right at center front or pleats. And we're going to make sure that it's free above the placket. Now remember there's a two inch raised waistline. So if it looks like this is a really long opening, it's to account for those extra two inches of length. You're going to stitch from that dot all the way down to the bottom to attach it. So that means that it's going to be free of the dot for you to get in and out of your garment. So after that, you can see here's our way to get into the skirt. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is make our tucks. So you're going to fold on the T and bring it into the dot. Fold this T, bring it into that dot, and baste that to place. Fold on the next T, bring that to the dot, like that. You only need to attach it right there at the top where the seam allowance is and do the same for the other side. My tucks are made and you can see it still has this really distinct tapered look to it. The hips are the widest point, which is common in an era when women corseted. So yeah, you go narrow and then down to the narrow hem. Do the pleats on the back and then we're going to attach the side seams together. I almost forgot to talk about the bottom of the hem. The hem allowance down here is almost non-existent. It's 3 eighths of an inch. So you're going to need to do a hem facing. Now you can do it straight across the bottom like this. You can do the shorter length up here, or you can do the scalloped edge. If you want to do the scalloped edge, you're going to have to cut it in at the bottom like that. And on the, the uh, line that's given for you, and then you are going to finish it with a little facing. Uh, you can do a really narrow facing, you can do a bigger facing, whatever way you want, but there is no hem allowed, so make sure that you give yourself some, uh, some finishing with a hem facing. Okay. It's a skirt. It stands on its own. <laughs> So you're going to check your bodice now. I would suggest touch, testing this top edge to make sure the circumference will wrap around and finish the seam 
where your bodice is, where it's going to sit on your bodice. So compare that to your bodice, measure it, or put it on top before you proceed to make sure that this is going to fit. If not, adjust your tucks now so that it will fit around the circumference of the bodice, covering those bodice seams, because it's going to be really hard to adjust that later on. After you have checked it and made sure that it fits to your bodice, you're going to turn under 3 8 inch seam allowance here. Turn it under, press it. You can baste it if that's easier for you. And then we're going to lap it on top of the bodice, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, this is the somewhat tricky part. You are going to place the bodice inside of the skirt. It will be a lot easier for you than it is for me with paper. So this is probably going to get loud. I'm probably going to mute this. With some difficulty, I did get it attached to the skirt. Now, I did have to significantly alter my tucks. I'm not sure if this was because I'm working on paper, which has no give, or if you'll need to let your tucks out a little bit. Like I said earlier, the, the uh, markings can move. And with these archive couture patterns, I'm really trying to give it as the original period pattern was because it helps you to expand your sewing knowledge. So before you turn under this edge and you do a lapped seam at the waist, please make sure you test the circumference to see if it needs to do that to match to your bodice and adjust the tucks as needed. So let's go down and look. Like I mentioned before, there is some wonkiness that you need to do at the waist. This is totally normal for 19 teens patterns and Edwardian patterns. This lap needs to tuck under this front like this. So you'll sew a little snap right there so that it matches exactly at center front on the skirt piece because these two need to lap with buttons right here. So if you want this center front slot seam like in the original pattern, you're going to need to finish this edge under and put a little snap that attaches it right there or a hook and eye. So it is stitched to the bodice and the foundation lining all the way around here, all the way around here, and then it stops at the side seam just like I told you to do when you attach the bodice to the foundation lining. Then at the side seam, you can attach it by machine, top stitching, a lapped seam like you usually do, inside right here. Not to the foundation lining, just to the front. Leave that lining free. Then this will move over and snap, or hook an eye, to the foundation lining. You're going to have to test the placement. And then you can button up your front and then do that little snap there at center front. That is how you're going to get into this garment. Let me pull away and show you one more time so that you can see what it looks like flat. Okay, let me explain this flat, and I'm sorry if the lighting is different. We're losing our light here. So, you are going to top stitch across from, you're going to need to leave a little bit free for buttons, so start a little bit in, top stitch all the way around to this side seam to the foundation lining and the outer bodice, okay? Once you get to this side seam, you stop your stitching. Then, you do a lapped seam from this to this, not including the foundation lining, only the outer bodice and the skirt, from here to here. You have a couple edges left that need to be finished. This part needs to have some sort of a extension finishing, such as a seam binding to that bottom edge to keep it from fraying. The same needs to be done over here. You need a little bit of room here to close this. The way it's going to close is you're going to have your foundation bodice closing with hooks and eyes up the front first. After that, you're going to button your vest closed. This goes underneath, buttons on top, right? Now you have these two little, little extensions left. Let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, apologies for the rip. That was for trying to stitch it. Okay, once you get down here, this has been buttoned to place. You have this part, and you have this part. You are going to need this to fasten at center front. So you're going to lap it right there and have it close with a hook and eye or a snap. 
So your little sandwich of fastening is hook and eye your lining, button your vest, lap this over the front, and finish it with a snap or a hook and bar. That's it. That's how you get into it. Now let me back it off and show you one more time. Since I know this can be a little confusing. To get into it entirely, you will hook and eye it up the front. Bring the uh, shield over, snap it into place. Snap the shield at the shoulder, snap or hook and eye it at the back of the neck. Next, you will fasten your vest buttons, and then you're going to bring this over and snap it, and then you should be in it entirely. To take it off, you do the snap, you undo the vest, you undo the snaps of the shield, you undo the hooks at the neck, you undo the hooks and eyes in the front. That's how you get in and out of this dress. I really hope this helped illustrate to you what 1910s patterns had going on when they had a foundation lining. I know it's a very complex thing to grasp if you've never seen an original garment. So hopefully this demo in paper will help you understand the sort of layers that you need in order to build a dress on a foundation lining. Of course, there were lots of variations of this. Different patterns will have different things, but regardless of whether you're working on my pattern, which is this one, or you're working on something entirely different, hopefully this technique will help you to put together your Edwardian and 1910s dresses. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Lauren. You can find me at wearinghistoryblog.com, Wearing History Patterns on Etsy at wearinghistory.etsy.com, wearinghistory.clothing for paper patterns, and you can find me on Instagram as Wearing History. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.